have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello and welcome to Cinema Royale, where we keep it classy no matter what sometimes. Who knows? We try to keep our noses clean. Uh, yeah, that's why I pick my nose during the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, um, my nose is clean, I think. I don't know, I should double check. My name is Mike Mist. I'm called Mike Mixtape. Wow. I totally screwed that up. Why did I do that? I can't even do my own online persona name. God damn. <laughs> I'm Mike McStape, and let me introduce you to my awesome film aficionados, a.k.a. my bros of cinema. First off, we've got Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. Hey guys, so I understand that there's been a lot of hate and a lot of wars over specific movies that are on TV, uh, uh, not on TV, but in theaters. But I think for now we need to forget all the hate on the other movies and focus on one in particular. Because mm. we seriously need to take down Ice Age. I swear to God. The fifth one has gone way too far. We need to take that piece of crap down. We need to tell them enough is enough. Uh, uh, it's the only movie that in the in the theater, when we were watching the ads, I legitimately, legitimately turned over to my mom and this was just like, yeah, these need to stop. She's like, yeah, uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And last but not least, James Sullivan, also known as Hymatude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by our new sponsor, David Duke for Senate, because our politicians don't suck enough. <laughs> and this is why I'm proud to be Canadian. <laughs> Although I've already done my jab at Donald Trump in my podcast. Oh boy. The fun that I've had there. <laughs> yeah. And I've pissed off a lot of Trump supporters. <laughs> Controversy. Oh, yeah. And it was fun. <laughs> and I'll do it again. <laughs> well, eventually. Depends so, if Donald Trump will do something stupid with animation again. I don't know. He'll do something stupid, of course. Maybe. I don't know if it's animated in there really bit, but yeah, but yeah. Uh, well, like, it is the anime. Well, like, my podcast is the animation podcast, so, like, it kind of has to fit in. That's true. Um, so, a few weeks ago, Warner Bros. released a film called The Legend of Tarzan. It got lukewarm responses. It's, you know, 30, in the 30s on Rotten Tomatoes. It's meh at most, I if, guess. I, I, I have yet to yeah, see it. Yeah, so if... If you want to see, um, pretty much, if you want to see Christoph Waltz as Clayton, and if you want to see Samuel L. Jackson as the new Turk, then you go see that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm sick of these goddamn gorillas and this motherfucking movie. <laughs> no, legit. Like, Samuel L. Jackson has to play uh, Tarzan's new buddy. It's yeah, it was pretty interesting to find out Samuel Jackson's in there. He's in everything. But uh, here, a few weeks later, we're here talking about other adaptations of Tarzan because the uh, the lore of Tarzan is interesting. It's really, ba it's actually based on a book. A long by time, by um, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Edgar Rice Burroughs. Yeah, mm -hmm. by Mr. Burroughs. Hi, Mr. Burroughs. Mr. Burroughs. Mr. Burroughs. <laughs> But yes, uh, from I believe the first novel was from nineteen thirteen, if I'm not mistaken. I could be fucking nineteen twelve. Okay, never mind. Nineteen twelve magazine production uh, publication book publication nineteen fourteen. I was close. I was in between. Uh, it's oldest time and uh, it's a classic. Tune as old as song. <laughs> it's a classic. It's a tale as old as apes. A, a tale as old as gorillas. 
the character is iconic enough to have more movies being produced and adaptations over the years. Um, so I figured, hey, let's just talk about other adaptations of Tarzan and how they portray Tarzan, Jane, and all the other characters from either what they know from the books or not. I don't know what comparisons we could do, but it's always fun to find out. Uh, first off, let's just start off with the classic from 1999, uh, known as Disney's Tarzan. Yes, um, and I think, honestly, nowadays, this would be considered the most popular adaptation of Tarzan in recent years. Um, because the thing is, is that you do have a mix of, like, what really makes it Disney, but you still have the elements of Tarzan. Now, of course, you do have, like, the extra like, Disney stuff, like, um, adding in all the side characters, like, make the gorillas talk, like, Turk, and then you also has, have, like, Tarzan's parents. But I think, like, it definitely does have uh, a beauty to it and, like, a great sign of artistry. Um, of course, like, I, th I believe this is actually one of the first... Um, uh, actually, well, I need to, like, I, I need to get a bit of a, of a source up because in terms of its animation, like, it has revolutionized a lot of things, um, especially when, like, there's one scene in particular where you, like, like, you see it all the time in the, com in the commercials uh, where Tarzan would be, sli like, he would be doing, like, the Tony Hawk moves and, um, mm -hmm. like, he would be, like, going through the trees and stuff. Surfing by and, the trees, uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's the vines themselves that really do make it um, very fascinating. Uh, what was the uh, deep can? Yeah, they used a software called Deep Canvas, where like they kind of give the branches that Tarzan goes on like this, um, like a bit of a 3D effect. Like and like taking my source here from IMDb, the Deep Canvas 3D effect with 2D characters blended in was suggested as something that Disney could try by John Lasseter. Of Pixar fame when he was employed as a Disney animator, not wanting Disney let go of John, uh, who went on to. Nope, that's not necessarily the. Hold on. Um, <laughs> oh, which allows 2D characters to exist seamlessly in 3D environment. Aren't you sure? Hold on a sec. Okay. One of these days, Adamant, you will get your you will get your source correct here. <laughs> yes. No, I will. Okay. No, but anyways. Oh no, I think that's kind of the thing. Is that deep canvas. It allow like because it allows people to form to pretty much create and to paint like in a way kind of paint something in 3D where the textures they look like they're painted on and they were done by hand but like in actuality like they kind of put layer upon layer upon layer to give that 3D effect and that's what like in an artistic manner that's what makes it amazing but even in the classical hand drawn like elements. Um, this is a great example of Glenn King's animation on Tarzan. Very beautiful. And you can tell, like, uh, the hard work that he had to put in, like, in the human anatomy. Like, he has done, um, you know, human characters before outside of, like, the beast and stuff like that. But this one is probably one of his best examples of a human character that he had to do. Very fantastic on that end. And, um, like, the characters are absolutely likable. Uh, like, uh, like, you do have Turk, which is Tarzan's friend. And then, like, you got Tantor, who's, like, more, who's more like the, I, I would say, like, maybe the kid-friendly type of comic relief. Where, like, it, it's the one that kids can, like, will quickly fall in love with immediately. But definitely a fun character where, like... Who seems a bit bumbling, but is not like he does care about his friends and stuff. Uh, uh, would this be the? Uh, uh, would this be the? Um, uh, the the elephant character. Yeah, the uh, yeah, Tentor uh, is the elephant. Um, okay. The relationship between the characters are absolutely strong. Um, like you can you can you can see there is a connection between Tarzan and Jane. Um, also a bit of the rivalry between Clayton and Tarzan and especially with Tarzan and the other gorillas like his parents like you can see there's an easy bond between him and his mother but you can also tell how he's having a hard time to really connect with his dad which like mm -hmm. he is pretty much very resentful considering that he is a human 
And now he tries his best to prove himself that he is a gorilla when he was a kid. You know, and it has an interesting side to it. But I think one of the most memorable aspects from that Tarzan would have to be the Phil Collins music. Like, everybody knows the Phil Collins music, and it's, um, like, it's kind of weird, because, like, this is one of the very few, um, or, actually, yeah, this is one of the very, very few uh, animated, like, this is one of the very few Disney animated films released in the 90s that is actually not a musical, but instead, they would have Phil Collins music play in the soundtrack for a lot of the montages, and they definitely are memorable, and a lot of them are definitely good. Like, you, like people can poke fun at like the way Phil Collins sings, but like a lot of the songs are definitely uh, great. Like, uh, a great, like really good ones include like "You'll Be in My Heart," or oh, yeah. like a lot of people do remember Two Worlds" or "Son of a Man." But then you also you also have um, the one with the, like technically not really a song by Phil Collins, but where all the gorillas they discovered Tarzan like where the humans are like with Jane and Clayton and uh, Jane's dad like where they are with all their like like the tents the research and all that kind of stuff and like they were just moving off there like shoo ba dap ba ba dap do ba do ba 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 da ba da do ba da like all that stuff like that was definitely fun so overall is it like in terms of 90s Disney animated films is it the best one of the bunch? I wouldn't really say so, but at least I would probably say it's definitely one of the best in terms of the late 90s. From Pocahontas, like, at least from Pocahontas to Tarzan. Tarzan is definitely one of the best, I would have to say. Oh, yeah, this, uh... Yeah, I, and I think, um, as far as what you've said there... Um, Phil, the Phil Collins music. I think that was one of the main pulls of this. Of this one is that I remember. Um, I, I remember uh, his his stuff was being played all over the trailers and the mm -hmm. in the documentaries that they were putting out. They were boasting that yeah, he's in this. He's doing the music in this, and. I actually was not very familiar with Phil Collins' music up until that point. So this movie to me was an introduction to Phil Collins. And I actually think it was a pretty awesome introduction. Well, honestly, like, I think a part of the reason could be because, like, whenever they're not using Alan Menken for their music, like, they want to make it a big deal. Like, for The Lion King, they brought in... Uh, Elton John and Tim Rice and they made that a big deal so with this one like they brought in Phil Collins so they want to make that as much of a big deal to say that we're not just going to rely on Alan Menken with our music so instead we're just going to pull in with Phil Collins mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah that's with me it was the first introduction to Phil Collins to be honest because I I was a kid, and I actually remember the soundtrack very, very well. I just remember loving it to bits, and the movie was all right. It, it was. It's been a while since I've seen it, though, and uh, I try to think like it's. God, all I remember is Rosie O'Donnell for some strange reason. Yeah, it's Ro Yeah, I think it's Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, Rosie O'Donnell was. Um, I know. Was Turk. Yeah, it just... I think it was, but also I think it was Wayne Knight that was Tantor, I believe. I believe like it was. the elephant. Yeah. yeah. I remember back I... when Rosie O'Donnell had a career and was actually likable. Those were the oh, days. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> but then she had to go all ching chong ching chong, Danny DeVito ching chong ching chong. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh Lord. Something like that. But um, uh, but yeah, the other thing that you hit on that I think the ninety uh, the Disney Tarzan as well is very much at the core of its of its um, 
themes, even though even though the Disney the Disney version lets a big surprise surprise it butchers the hell out of the story. Um, well, that's what they do. I mean, that's what they're they not do. just gonna adapt a story. Yeah. Yeah, but I think there was that period in the, like the '80s and '90s when they were really, really getting into the butchering aspect. Still, well, yeah, especially. Makes, go on. What makes this this still centrally work as Tarzan is the theme of uh, uh, the theme of identity. Ah, yes, yes which yes. plays a huge part. In most Tarzan stories, uh, the good ones at least, um, uh, the Disney's Tarzan uh, deals with identity in the sense that um, he's trying to be an ape and please his surrogate father, but at the same time he's sort of like, well, who are these? Who are these human-like? Uh, who are these human-like characters uh, who who have just sort of come in? Why are they Why are they like me and whatnot? And then he sort of puts it together and says, uh, "You know what? Maybe, uh, maybe, um, uh, maybe I'm one of them after all." But there is a a substantial difference between what you are and who you are and Mike's getting up and and moving somewhere where are you going uh, uh, I guess a, he had a reminder or something he had a text message he went out to use the bathroom maybe yeah maybe I don't know. this is a reminder Mike you need to you need to use the bathroom right how now. sad is it that your phone has to remind your kidneys to work Ah, what if I have to go pee during the podcast and my bladder explodes? <laughs> or maybe he just takes too much priority on the podcast down to the point that he needs reminders to do simple things like go to the bathroom or eat food. Mm -hmm. You want to uh... go? What? Uh, I guess it's texting time, whatever. It's texting time? You got a text too? Yeah, whatever. No, just check our phones and stuff. Or you know what? Uh, oh, screw this, man. I'm I'm going to go check out my Pokemon Go, see what's up. <laughs> it can happen when there's a Pokemon at home, but not all the time. Have you found the Hillary Clinton Pokemon that's that everyone's been searching for? <laughs> Uh, well, let's see. I found, well, I found some Raditas. Is that, is that, is that good enough? Well, I don't know what they look like. Uh, hold on. Yeah, something like this. Uh, the teeth are too big. Mm. Anyway. Wait, hold on, maybe I can find... How's this? Not enough hair. Mm. I'll get it right eventually. The eyebrows are big enough. Hmm. We're close. Castle is the close one. Or no, wait. Hold on. Uh... Adjust the hair color, and I think you found it. <laughs> Just find a blonde oddish. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Okay, Mike, where the hell are you? Yeah, really, man. It's this podcast, and suddenly he's out. Should we continue with Adam, or, like, what's going on? Um, 
I do not know. Do we have anything else to say about Disney's Tarzan? No, but I guess, like, like you really hit the nail on the head, like, in terms of the adaptation thing. But the one thing that, like, what makes it forgivable in terms of, like, for what Disney does is that it's the characters themselves. Like, I've already mentioned, like, the side characters that are more associated with Disney. But even the ones, like, talk, like... Like what you said, with the theme of redemption, it really makes the character. It really makes characters like Tarzan really strong, and like you could definitely feel like you could definitely feel, um, whether it be like the love from Jane or like how, like how she enters into the scene. Like she de- she definitely is one of the stronger, like or at least one of like a strong female Disney character at least. Like she definitely does have a bit of a personality into her. And, oh, yeah, uh, she can actually, she can actually uh, swing on the vines with them. Yeah, and you also got, you know, like Clayton is actually a, you know, a pretty decently menacing villain. You know, like, uh, yes. it, it, like it definitely shows like a good example of how like he has, you know, he definitely has manpower, and how he can he can overcome like gorillas and stuff. <laughs> like legit, and like he down to the point that he legitimately shot one dead. Oh yeah, he. Well, he. He's built like Gaston, so. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that actually. Yeah, you think about that as much. I don't know. It's usually. But like, yeah, like it yeah. definitely has strong characters, beautiful animation, great songs, and a pretty solid story, even though it doesn't completely follow uh, the original book. But yeah, overall. Like, Tarzan is definitely legit. Oh, oh Jesus, yeah. Tarzan is definitely a legit movie. And then, of course... Oh, yeah, even... It, oh, yeah, even with... Uh, even with uh, the character of Clayton, the one, one thing you're going to find interesting is that he's not meant to be a... He's not meant to be an antagonist in the story. Mm. Wait till I get to that comparison later. Oops. Mike, did you take a bathroom break? No, I was taking care of my dogs. They were barking. Oh. Uh. Doggy dogs. They seem to be barking a lot at night. You know, especially when we're sleeping, so they just I had to go down there and just tell them to be quiet. So that's why I kind of mm-hmm. left. But, uh... And then... Of course, Disney does their thing in trying to milk it and do sequels. Tarzan 2, Tarzan and Jane. Oh, yeah, with George, with George Colin as Tarzan's mentor for some reason, learning the exact same lesson that he would in the first movie. Yeah, I, I just sort of found Tarzan 2, I guess, forgivable for a, for a midquel, but it... That doesn't necessarily mean that it had to happen. <laughs> well, what Disney sequel should happen? <laughs> Bambi 2. That's all. Uh, uh, well, it's, it's, it's alright, actually. Eh, I don't know if I would say we, that we need it, but eh, no, it, it actually came out pretty decent. Yeah, yeah you might say that. Yeah. Pretty, well, actually pretty good. Yeah, Baby 2. Baby 2 is good in my books. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you guys that Tarzan is a very decent Disney movie. I mean, I just love for the soundtrack. Like, I remember Phil Collins the most, actually. just It's part of my childhood. It's just... That's why I grow to love Phil Collins more as an artist, you know, through Tarzan, the soundtrack, and then actually digging deeper to his other work, and I was just like, oh, wow, he's a great musician. Mm-hmm. He plays... I remember watching the music videos. I was like, this guy's playing every instrument. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, if you go deeper into the into his career, you know, he started in Genesis. You know, he was a drummer. And then, of course, they uh, Peter Gabriel split. You know, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll be the singer. So he does. he's the singer and the drummer of Genesis. 
So it's like, oh wow, and he went solo, he does all the instruments, it's like, oh, this guy's fucking amazing, it's like really cool. The soundtrack comes along, it's like, oh wow. And I was like nine years old when it came out, so it was like, oh wow, this is great music. And I go, you'll be in my heart. And I was just like, oh my god, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I just And it would be even more amazing in metal. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah. Oh, you'll be in my heart. I actually heard I actually heard a J-pop version of that. So look out to the door. It's it's mad and Yeah, so uh, loosely translated as we want to be for cons. <laughs> we want to get translated to we want to get it on like Donkey Kong <laughs> <laughs> yeah but so yeah it's a if it's a decent Disney movie I it's one of my up there when it comes to childhood Disney films um, however a year before 98 I looked it up 98 was the year that Warner Brothers once again for the second time and the third time being this year. Uh, I just realized that Greystoke is a Warner Bros. movie, by the way, so... Warner Bros. has produced at least three Tarzan movies over the years. Mm. So 90... Interessante. So a year before the Disney one, 98 had Warner Brothers doing Tarzan in the Lost City. With, uh... With uh, the Starship Trooper star, I believe. Yes, Caps, Caps, I get Casper Van Dien. Sorry, I almost butchered his name, but yes, and that's all because of Star Trek Troopers. Like, Star Trek Trooper was Casper Van Dien's biggest movie, like I believe ever in his career, and that kind of spawned these other roles, and that's where he got casted as Tarzan slash John Clayton. Third. Um, mm -hmm. So, this is a bit different because um, in the movie, uh, you kind of go parallel between. It's like it's sort of like a sequel, you know. It's further in where it's not telling the origin of Tarzan, but it's saying, "Oh, here, here's Tarzan, aka John Clayton, you know, in England, you know, celebrating." Uh, he's all proper, you know, and he's talking English properly, mm -hmm. and uh, he's gonna get married to Jane. And uh, before that, uh, there's a a venturer explorer named uh, Nigel Ravens. He's in Africa to look look for the lost city of Opel. Opel, I think, is what it's called. Cause it's funny, cause the opening of the movie has like narration and, and an opening text crawl like any other fucking movie would it's like in 19 mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like explain in 1903 blah, blah 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 you know uh there was a man uh who would be heir to the Greystoke fortune and he was raised by apes known as tarzan and blah 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 i was like okay they're trying to explain the kind of the introduction of it and then they skip ahead a few years or so in Africa, Rivers, uh, Rivers, Ravens is just this antagonist. He's looking for this lost city, and he burned down a African village. And then all of a sudden, Tarzan gets his vision because he's uh, he knows the the tribe and he knows the head of it. And they send the message to like the fireplace, and then like a lion roar goes distance. You know, they hears the lion roar like, oh no. Africa's in peril. I gotta go back. And Jane's like, oh, but no, but <laughs> Jane's like, oh, but are you kidding me? We're just getting married pretty soon. You can't do this to me. And all of a sudden, he just leaves. Just goes to Africa, you know. And <laughs> and Jane just stays behind for a little bit. And you know, he's got to go back to Africa and save, you know, this. Yeah, because he must be the um, he must be the Superman of Africa. <laughs> mm-hmm. Basically, so my city needs me. 
what, basically what it is. It just sounds like two, 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 two worlds, one family. <laughs> Except I have to leave this family to get to with this family. It just, ah, uh, it. And it's very forgettable too, because you try to remember the movie, and it's very forgettable. I mean, uh, so most of the movie, you see Tarzan trying to deflunk kind of uh, ravens and his crew. You know, he's, you know, releasing all the animals that they caught. You know, they they're trying they beat up the henchmen of ravens. You know, trying to stop the expedition to the lost city, and. Eventually down the line, Jane does go to Africa to support and kind of follow along Tarzan in, into this adventure. I'm just like thinking, wait, what are you doing, Jane? Stay over there. Like, don't get involved with Tarzan and all his shenanigans. It's just like, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> and of course, when does she, so how soon before she gets captured? She doesn't. Well, oh, okay. she doesn't. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me go back up. She does at towards the tail end of the movie. Like, it takes until the yeah. end of the like, movie before she gets captured. Like, yeah, yeah, dude. Like, it's, it's always a thing. It's like, Tarzan's gotta go after them and try to get Jane back. Um, but most of the movie, like, when Jane comes to meet Tarzan and they start hanging out, there's, like, a montage of them, like, hanging out, swinging from vines, swimming, going to the treehouse, you know, and, and all of a sudden you see Ravens and his crew just doing whatever going to the lost city it's like really tarzan get your ass moving and get him before he gets to the lost city and it's just like mandering around with J jane like you, you hear this like music and it's like they're in they're like in the waterfall and it's like what are you doing just stop it it's like, <laughs> but we're in our honeymoon we gotta have a romantic moment right to uh, to sort of pad out in between all this and, and all the action that's going on, clearly. It worked with Superman, did it not? <laughs> and that's what maybe they were going for. I don't know. Just um, And by the way, Jane Porter was played by, ironically enough, Jane March. <laughs> so Jane playing Jane. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh... That's a, a role she was born to play right there, then. Yeah. It's like April O'Neil playing April O'Neil. <laughs> exactly. 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 <laughs> um, it's very hard to... Because there's a... Ch the, ch the tribe leader... Um, oh, God, his name was, like, so weird. It was, like... Uh, <laughs> like... M Magumbo. Magumbo, like really? Yeah, it's Magumbo. Yeah, that's what it was. It was Magumbo, like Chief Magumbo. They gotta go with that. They gotta go with is, that racist thing. Chief Magumbo. Is he the? Is he the chief of Mamba Zamba Land? <laughs> no, but he's like. Wanna, the... Does he have a? Does he have a sub name named Prince Ooga Booga Booga? <laughs> But he's like the. This is the where you, you question. Does he put the bop in the bop shoe bop shoe bop? No. Uh, send, him, my... send him to the U.S. Send him to the U.S. <laughs> you send him to the U.S. Your name is now Lord and Lou. <laughs> no, it's weird because Magumbo, he is this mystical tribe leader, and he, like, he vanishes, like, from thin air at one point. And it's like, where'd you come from? And he, and then of course, when he was sending the message to Tarzan at the beginning, you no, know, you see it through the fireplace, his face comes up. Tarzan, you must come to save us. <laughs> it's just like Magumbo. It's just so weird. With it, uh, I'm sorry. With a name like Magumbo, it sounds like he should uh, he should become a chef and move to New Orleans. Hey, can I have some more gumbo? <laughs> <laughs> try, try my gumbo gumbo today. <laughs> I'm so. It tastes so good. My gumbo so good it makes you slap your mama. <laughs> don't don't ask me how good it is. Ask my mother, Mama Gumbo. 
<laughs> so, at, it's, it's, we are stop racist mics so we can tell the story. <laughs> oh my god, you guys are gonna get so much flack in the comments, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it's just, it's random, like, you know, you, you get a shot of Jane and Tarzan hanging out, and then, you know, um, there's one point where they had to save a baby elephant that was captured, and it was just like, really? Really? You gotta do that? Of course, in the treehouse, Jane sees this big snake, this python, anaconda come out of nowhere. It's like, ah, help me, Tarzan! It's like, and then Tarzan's like, I got the snake. This is a friend of mine. And Tarzan's, and Jane's like, why didn't you tell me this is a friend of yours? And... Because <laughs> they're stupid. It's just so stupid. And then, then... I forgot. Tarzan forgot. <laughs> and then, then one point, you know, um... Of course, Tarzan and Jane are trying to follow ravens on, you know, trying to follow them around so he could stop them. And um, there's one point where Jane is, like, on her own with a gun. And there's this, this lion pops out of nowhere just, just growling at her. And it's like, go away, go away, get out of here. And she starts shooting at it just to distract it. And the ravens and the crew heard it and trying to get her. And that's where the point where she does get captured at one point. And... And then comes George of the Jungle to save Jane. <laughs> but, but, we all remember that fight scene with the lion. <laughs> the lion just ran off before that, but there's a point before she gets captured is that there's a cobra. There's a cobra right by her, and she's the cobra's like <laughs> trying to bite her, and all of a sudden Tarzan comes out of nowhere, and the cobra bites, bites him, and he's dying because of poison he couldn't get the poison out so he's dying and I think Magamba <laughs> it's revealed that because there's bees there's bees bees come out of nowhere and they cover you know Tarzan it's like I don't think they're stinging him but it's just like it covers up Tarzan to disguise him for a bit like try to hide him from the people and it reveals that the bees were Magumbo like Magumbo turns into himself after the bees combine is like I'm a gumbo I I saved you <laughs> So he What? <laughs> I turned into bees. I saved your life Gumbo so I turns into bees, bees. <laughs> But Magumbo So we have a Tarzan movie where a dude named Magumbo turns into bees <laughs> It's so fucking weird cuz Tarzan dies at one point and then all of a sudden it's like oh I'm here I, I saved you, and when he wakes up, he's all, you know, covered in a blanket, but he's got a new, he's, because I think he had a loincloth before, but now he's got, like, these leather panties now, and he's got, like, a bow and arrow and a knife now, so I don't know where Magambo gave what? him all that stuff. <laughs> you must remember, Tarzan, I saved your life, I saved your life, I saved your life, I saved your life, I saved your life. <laughs> And so, the the end climax, because it's just so interesting, because they end up going to the Lost City. They end up finding the Lost City. Mm -hmm. Tarzan goes after them, saves Jane, but in the process, um, Magambo is trying to, to protect the fortress of the city of Opel, and he turns into a giant snake. <laughs> he turns into a giant snake. Where the frick does this magic of Magumbo come from? What? Well, why can't we have a movie about this guy instead of Tarzan? He turns into a giant snake. It's bad Technically, didn't we have that movie? It was called Exorcist Two. <laughs> it's it's so bad. It's bad CGI. Like the snake is so bad in CGI. It's like. Ass. It's so horrible. I was looking. I was like, "Oh my god, this is '90s anime, '90s CGI is so horrible." <laughs> this is. I will show you how snake-like I can be. <laughs> it was so. Uh... And then he just vanishes. Like I think I don't think they kill him, but then he just vanishes out of nowhere. And then okay, I kind of skipped around because I was kind of like, "Okay, where is this going?" So there's a. Jane gets saved, but there's a final f conflict between uh, Nigel Ravens and Tarzan, and they're in this, like, throne treasure room, and there's a throne you can sit on, you get all the power in the world, 
you know, that sort of thing, I guess, with the Lost City. What? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Nigel... You sit down in a chair and you conquer the world? Something like that, but here's what happens. He sits in it, and all of a sudden the sky gets dark, and there's a lightning, and it's a pyramid, so the pyramid half just psh, burst open, and he... He gets electrocuted by the lightning, you know, it's like he got rejected from the sea, he's like... He said no. He just got electrocuted, and then all of a sudden you see the bad CGI, and it's... He, he turns into a skeleton, all of a sudden, poof! What the... So basically, they... This movie predicted the, uh... This movie predicted, uh... Uh, the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It just, it's, it's so fucking weird. It's just, it, 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 it doesn't, it, I don't know. It broke me when I was watching it. I was like, what is this movie? I mean, Casper Van Dien was okay. He had this somewhat British accent, you know, because he was adapting to British life, you know, after moving from Africa and he was okay. Jane March as Jane was okay. She actually looked like the part of Jane. That was fine, but... There was just like, it was random. It was just, ah, uh, it had nothing to do with the Tarzan story whatsoever. It was like something completely different. Like, it had nothing, like, ah, uh, it was so horrible. It's, it sounds not like, yeah, you remember what I said about the better Tarzan stories about identity and, and whatnot? Well, one thing that I do know about Tarzan, and this is this is not my opinion. This is the general opinion that uh, that um, uh, fans of the book series even have said is that you know they have a lot of different stories, and uh, at the Edgar Rice stories, they say they just get worse as they go on. They just get cheesier and cheesier. Right. And from what you're describing, this could be one of those. I don't know. Did they cite a specific book in the... No, because let me uh, let's see what it says here. Back up. Uh, <clears throat> loosely based on the Tarzan stories by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Loosely based. Loosely. Loosely. <laughs> Very loosely. Very loosely. Yeah, emphasis on loosely. It was just... What even? It was... I mean, I was excited to see Casper Van Dien, because he's, he's somewhat a decent D actor, you know. And, uh... I just... Oh, yeah, he's your favorite Asylum actor. <laughs> he's okay, at most. Um, yeah, it's just... It's... It was hard to find the movie, but it's just like, if you end up getting a copy of it, just, I don't know, like, for shits and giggles, watch it, but it just, uh, no wonder Warner Brothers tr had to do this three times, because the second time didn't work as well, but, but there is a connection, sort of, actually, which is a great segue to, uh, mm. it's funny, because Stanley... S. Cantor produced this one, and he also produced Greystoke. Oh boy. Yes. The uh, the nineteen eighty three film, I believe, I believe was the the year. Uh, yeah. Greystoke. 84. 84. year I was born. I should know this. It... There's different listings. Yeah. Uh, Greystoke... Uh, I'm just going to call it Greystoke because uh, they call it a long-ass movie title. Greystoke, The Legend uh, of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes. Exactly. You could have just called it Tarzan of the Apes, like the like the book, but no, you had to go. You had to go and give us a a mouthful. Um. Tarzan, 
Uh, yeah, Greystoke is put is typically thought of as being one of the most realistic. Uh, I shouldn't say realistic, but uh, uh, one of the most um, uh, one of the most accurate portrayals of Tarzan on the film. And uh, when I say accurate. I mean to the to the novels, which again I have not read, but I I've skipped through Wikipedia and I've looked at footnotes, so that it sort of helps. This is one, also that I believe we partially recorded off the TV on tape, and I sort of remember watching it as a kid, but not all the way through. It was it was pretty boring, and watching it as an adult. Yeah, it's it's rather tedious, um, but that doesn't make it a necessarily a bad movie, a bad production. It's just sort of very acquired taste. Um, the idea behind this one is that, uh, like in the story, John Clayton heir to the heir to the to the uh, the family name, uh, the family treasures of Greystoke, uh, and his wife go out on a ship. They get shipwrecked. Uh, she get uh, they give birth to a child while on the while on the island, and this uh, apes an an ape comes through. Um, I and. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna say this. Um, the movie, uh, because of the um, because of the lack of speaking, or the lack of the Disney touch here, I should say, you don't really have much names or language for the ape characters. Hell, if it wasn't for the title alone, The Legend of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes, you wouldn't really know that this character was supposed to be Tarzan because not once throughout the entire film. Is the name Tarzan ever actually spoken? Instead, what am I? What am I trying to get at? Oh yeah, one of the apes. I'm just gonna call him D Bag Ape because this guy's this guy's a problem. He's such a D Bag for for like no apparent reason. Um, yeah, D Bag Ape comes through. And kills, uh, uh, kills off Tarzan's father. Um, and re and there's a female gorilla who's uh, who's just actually recently lost uh, lost her her child to this very same D bag uh, who just decided to kill her child for funsies. I don't know. Um, and she's carrying it around, and it's kind of disturbing, actually. She's carrying around this dead, dead little monkey, and uh, she's still lactating. And she looks around, and she sees Tarzan. Uh, she sees baby Tarzan there, and she just like she looks at her her baby and just drops it to the floor and goes and picks up this other one. And this is how this is how things work in the wild. Sorry, Disney. But, um... Yeah, she raises the baby as... as her own. And, of course, this is Tarzan. And he grows up to be... a very familiar-looking Frenchman. Over time. In his first role, mind you. Yes. He's not there for the first over 30 minutes of the movie. Uh, for that period of time, you see him growing up uh, through different stages of his life, age 6, age 12, and he's stock butt naked the whole time. I was just like looking at this like, how did this get a PG rating, not an R rating? Because butt is okay. And how do they ever show this on TV? 
But it's how, okay. How, what is that? Well, I don't know how they work in Canada, but over here, but it's not okay. <laughs> so, but again, what I want to tackle here is the is the theme of identity. Without speaking, this Tarzan establishes relationships with his fellow apes. Um, but it, as well, eventually encounters the home in which he was, in which he was conceived, in which uh, uh, he was delivered, you know, his parents' home. And he learns to start using tools that he finds in there, like like knives. And he looks at he looks at the pictures that have been left around. He says, "Okay, there's a belt. Got to put this around my waist and use that to carry stuff." And I guess that's eventually he figures he figures out at some point that he's going to need to wear a loincloth uh, because. <laughs> Well, you can't swing around uh, with your vine out. Mm-hmm. And so halfway through the movie, Ian Ulm enters the scene as a, a man from Belgium on safari. And he's, uh, he's taking around these British guys... Uh, who are just hunting like maniacs, and he uh, he gets injured by a tri- by this uh, by this wild tribe out in the jungle, and uh, Tarzan comes across him and actually nurses him back to health. But the funny thing is, Ian Holm recognizes him. Uh, not immediately off the bat, but he recognizes, uh, he sees the home uh, in which he grew up. He recognize the, recognizes the Claytons, and he says, Wait a minute, I know this family. This must be their son. Oh, this is the Earl of, this is the, uh, the Earl of Greystoke. This is the Earl of Greystoke's uh, grandson right here. We need to get him out of the jungle and back to the land of the people. And uh, this is where the theme of identity comes into play because he tells Tarzan, his convincing argument to Tarzan is that this you have to go back to human humanity because this is what you are. You are a human being. And after, after some chest pounding and... Uh, and crazy drama Tarzan accepts that he is John Clayton Jr. and decides to decides to head back especially after a couple of things happen uh, D-Bag Ape kills his mother and uh, in return he decides to go ahead and kill D-Bag Ape so he's got uh, he's got no real connections over here. He might as well go back to human land and uh, and uh, explore his family over there. That's where it really becomes fish out of water territory. He's uh, it. It takes him a long time to learn English, and I'm going to give a lot. I'm going to give a lot of spoilers away here. Eventually, what happens in in England, where they go, is quite different from, uh, uh, I'm told, what happens in the book. He meets Jane, uh, who's played by Annie McDell, falls in love with her, uh, decides to go ahead and step in uh, as his role as the heir of Greystoke. Once he's become somewhat civilized, in in the bed he's still a bit of a primate. You know, he's still going around. Ooh, 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 ooh. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jane, I picked some fleas out of your hair. 
Whoop. And she's just like, oh, that is so hot. <laughs> Wait, girl find out attractive? Let me take notes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she must if she's willing to put up with it. Um, but yeah, he's he's trying to fit in, and uh, there's even a party that uh, that the Earl of Greystoke has in his honor, saying that this is his grandson, and that he is the new Earl of Greystoke, and we all have to say cheers and drink our wine and it looks like it's going to be fun you know according to the novel from what i've read up, read up on um at the end of tarzan of the apes tarzan uh ends up fully fully um uh renouncing his title as as a member of the greystoke family so he can marry so he can marry Jane and stop her from marrying this other guy. Almost happens here. Almost. But as soon as the Earl of Greystoke has his little announcement, he, decide, he decides, you know what? I'm done living. What? <laughs> I'm done living. That took a dark turn. No, he he doesn't. It would have been. It would have been less of a, less of a jerk move, I think, if he if he just had a heart attack and died. But no, right there at the party. He commits suicide and makes it look like an accident. How? Like, did he jump off a cliff or? He. He um. He he takes a metal tray and rides it down some stairs like it's a sled. <laughs> what? This happens. He's just like, okay, you know what? My my heritage, my family, my house—it's all gonna be safe now. I can just die. Wee. <laughs> and. And you couldn't wait until after the party. I'm just sort of thinking, like, I had to watch that again. I was like, what? He did that on purpose? That's a party killer right there. Why would you do that? Um, and that's just one... That's just one negative thing that happens to Tarzan here. The next is... He goes to a museum that the Greystoke family is funding, and he realizes that his father ape from the jungle has actually been captured and brought here. They're going to dissect him and stuff him and whatnot. What? Tarzan? Uh, no, his ape father. Oh. Oh, yeah, believe yeah, it or you, not, I thought you uh, legit made, meant Tarzan. It's like, well, he fell down the stairs. Let's stuff him. We'll, we'll still call him king. It'll just look like it. <laughs> so he tries to break out. He tries to break his father out, and in the process, uh, the the response is uh, uh, the royal guard shoot uh, shoot his father right out in the middle of. Right now, out in the middle of public. And it's at this point, Tarzan realizes, you know what? I came here because I didn't have any family left in the jungle. The only family that I had here is an, was an old man who's now dead. And this is where the theme of identity comes back into play. There is what he is... And there is who he is. And who he is belongs in the jungle. Not not in the man world. So that's how the story ends, actually, is that he goes back to the jungle. It's kind of... 
it's kind of tragic in a sense, but if there, I, I suppose if you're dealing with the themes of identity, that's the most logical route to take in a, in a story. And I don't know whether to, I don't know whether to think of it as necessarily a happy ending or just a good ending. You know what I'm saying? Oh, true, true, true. Right. right. Has anyone else here seen Greystoke, or am I the only one? Um. You're the only one. Yeah, you are the only one, honestly. I've never heard of Greystoke, uh, uh, Greystoke until you mentioned it. Hmm. Well, you might find this interesting. Andy McDowell had to be dubbed over. Really? Yes, it was her. This was her first film role, and uh, they decided uh, because uh, she had such a, th- a thick Southern accent that they could she couldn't really pull off. I I want to call it a British accent, but they but they say in the movie that she's from Maryland. Hmm. Really? So why? I don't know what's up with that. They introduce her. This is my, uh, this is my niece Jane from Maryland. How do you do? I'm like, she's got a, she's got a British Maryland accent, a New England accent. I don't know. Weird. Yeah, that is kind of weird. I mean, like, you know, worst case, like I can imagine worst case scenario, she could just bird it. You know what I mean? Bird it. Yeah, yeah, like Bert. Like, yeah, like do like Dick Van Dyke and like with Bert in uh, Mary Poppins. Oh. Uh, really, really put on a thick Cockney, Cockney sort of accent that almost sound, sounds like something. Yeah, really try to be so Cockney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really try. Yeah, really try to be so Cockney. Then try just just let out just a little bit of uh, of American in there, so you really know that you're faking it. No. No worries, there are more happy crew, and then watch his chim chim chiri chim chiru. Actually, the actress that they got to voice her over, and this is where things come a little bit full circle. The actress that they got to voice her over was none other than Glenn Close. Hmm. Who later went on to play... The grandma from Hoodwinked? You know... I'm drawing a blank, James. Hold on. James? Tarzan's mother in Disney's Tarzan. Oh! Oh. Right. I never... Th- oh. So that's who it was. I never made that connection. <laughs> yes. Okay, that it all, it, it all comes full circle now. She went from Jane to... Uh, whatever her name was. Uh, Tarzan's mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... Okay, as you were talking about your movie, I was thinking of other elements of my movie that just popped in my head. Um, mm. the, the apes in Tarzan Lost City, they are just ridiculous. They're just ape suits. They're just goofy ape suits. They're just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny just to see them They're just walking around like... <laughs> It was just like George the Jungle, you know, with those apes in those suits. Uh. But the whole thing about identity, like the, in my movie Tarzan in, in Lost City, like they're at the point where he's already in England and he's already developed, you know, th- you know the, the the Greystoke estate, you know, kind of thing, and marrying Jane and blah 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 blah. And there's no sense of that in my movie where 
he has to go back to uh, Africa to become Tarzan, like, instantly, boom, just like that, and just, like, nothing changes. Like, it, he, he, he still speaks English, but it's just, like, he's... Um, there's nothing there for identity thing for crisis or you know for that plot you know subplot kind of thing um there is a mention like he shows jane the tree house that he grew up in you know it looks a little rustic you know and he's like telling jane i taught myself to read but you know at first i was just looking at pictures in the book and i'm thinking why didn't you say it? Just show me it. Show, not tell. You know, it would have been nice to see you grow up. You know, that origin story, like, you know, not everybody's seen the movie Tarzan. Not everybody knows the book. You know, if you're walking in this movie just blindly, you know, not knowing about Tarzan, you know, you watch the movie, it's like, okay, what's going on? Mm. Just, just made no it's sense. like they wanted to make... It sounds almost like they wanted to make a sequel to Greystoke, but they didn't. Uh, they didn't quite do it. Well, it kind of could have been because, like I said, the same producer from Greystoke did this, produced this film as well. So I'm just thinking, okay, he wanted to give another chance at Tarzan, I guess, and I don't know. It was just weird. Um, it is very forgettable. Like I, I watched it earlier this week, and I can't remember anything about it that much besides the one I described in the earlier. It's just like it is not like Tarzan. <laughs> Tar, kind of when Tarzan fights, he kind of reminds me of he does like martial arts kind of moves. Like he just kicks and punches. Kind of reminds me of, like Jean Claude Van Damme kind of fighting moves. Like. <laughs> I don't know. It just I was like, what the, what the, and he does the kicks, and he just. Oh, there's a couple of times where he was doing traps. You know, he he was trying to trap the henchmen, and he did that classic, you know, that string trap where you put the leg through and it goes upside down. That kind of trap, you know. Oh no, I got trapped! Whoop! And he gets dragged up into the tree, and Tarzan just kicks the shit out of him, just beats him up. It's like, <laughs> it's it's so cheesy, but it's. Oh, I don't know. It's just. And oh dear! I just felt like they were just trying to, like Nigel Ravens, like he just, he just, it's like I want, I want to Tarzan killed. That doesn't matter if he's alive. Just kill him. Just I want him dead. Like <laughs> he's just this stupid. I don't know. He's like I want the lost city of Opel. Opel. I was just like. <laughs> I care about this lost city because if I find this lost city, I've become very, very rich because I can reveal to the world that it is a lost city and I'd be the king of this lost city of Opel. It's just... And not only be this king of this lost city that I don't know if tourism will be big, but we shall try. And... Yeah, it doesn't sound like they were trying to make an intelligent movie with what... with. Uh... The Lost City. It sounds like they were just trying to make a straight up action adventure flick. It was yeah. And the tribe the tribe has a lot bigger role too. Like there's one tribesman is like, you know, I want to kill these people. These people are ruining everything in our culture, you know, in our villages that they ruin everything. And then <laughs> there's a one point where uh he's like, you know, I don't know what the word was, but it was like a African word for like white man and he's like, Tazan, you are that exactly and he's like i can't believe it. he called me a white man he called me you know i'm not you know i what are you people you know i was raised by apes and you guys became of my friends you know it's just it just <laughs> i don't know it's just it is a goofy ass film just straight from the 90s like this is 90s cheese you know this this is stupidity like comes right off the screen you watch it, like, especially this is like Majumbo turning to a giant snake. Just, 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 I, when I saw that giant snake, I was just like, okay, this is definitely like a fantasy adventure because I don't think any Tarzan novel featured a tribe leader who could transform into bees or snakes. Like, god damn it. it I'm sure that there's a Tarzan wiki somewhere that you can look this up. I probably could, but I don't fucking feel like it because it just seems so 
so out of place. Like, I thought, you know, Tarzan is a story where it could honestly be realistic, to be honest. Like, there's, it could be, like, a real, realistic story that could actually happen in real life. Like, you know, uh, parents die, child gets raised by animals, and, you know, they get discovered by humans, and they have to try to... Uh, teach it how to be a proper human like I, I thought that'd be like a realistic take on the story like or something but it's just I guess you can go cheesy with it somehow yeah I remember this I remember the ads for that one there was no way there was just no way uh, but well you do bring up a point I mean uh fair, uh the odds of somebody being raised by animals, there is that happens about say less than one percent of the time, but it still it still is it still is something that happens. <coughs> they call them uh, in psychology they call them feral children, right? There's a term for them, but it's 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 very rare. And I think I think Greystoke was probably was probably a better way at realistically telling that story as opposed to <laughs> what you're describing here. It's just ugh. Oh, hey, I'm actually reading this. Hold on. Uh, Tarzan Lost City, which starred Caster Van Dien, essentially a follow on to Greystoke. They actually list that as saying a follow on to Greystoke. I could have let you know before you watched. Uh, this film was set in the 19... Oh, it is the 1920s. Never mind. I was wrong about the decade they were in. Attempted to capture the flavor of some of the later novels in the Tarzan series. Ah, the cheesiness Tarzan stories. Yes, okay. That's where that comes in. Um, in which the ape man encounters increasingly fantastic civilizations hidden in the deep jungles. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, the, the latest Tarzan film. Okay, where was the... I was going to read something else, because there was an upcoming Tarzan-related thing, and I wanted to bring it up here for the end here, which was... Uh, let me go back here. Where was I? Ah, Netflix. And I told James about this mm. earlier. Netflix will air a animated series entitled Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan and Jane. Now hear me out hear this Matt. oh boy it is set in modern day where 16 year old mm -hmm. tarzan returns from the african jungle to london boarding school where he meets jane who helps him solve environmental injustice crimes and mysteries in other words it's absolutely nothing like Edgar Rice Burroughs' Tarzan. This is just some. This is just somebody taking the name and going with it. Yeah, it's pretty much like it's pretty much like the 1994 Jungle Book, where it has nothing to do with the Jungle Book except for the title, and just make the story like legit Tarzan. You know, originally for this podcast, I wanted to talk about the Jungle Book, but. Mike said no, because it's based on the Jungle Book, not Tarzan. But the plot is freaking Tarzan! Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you could make the argument, but I was like, it, it, it just, I mean, there's going to be similarities between franchises. I mean, some Jungle Book, Tarzan, sure. Even the up Superhero movies, why not? And even the upcoming Pete's Dragon, for fuck's sake, could be a Tarzan story for crying out loud. Oh, yeah. And let's not forget the recent uh, Jungle Book remake. Ah, uh, yes. Well, that one is a lot more Jungle Book. Well, it is. Disney's Jungle Book, but still Jungle Book. Right. <laughs> yeah, what he said. Yep, and so next time on Cinema Royale, we're going to venture into the uh, espionage genre of film known as spy films, checking out some not-so-iconic spies, some interesting spy films in general, because there's been plenty of spy films over the years, and we need to pay tribute to that. Plus, it'll be during James's birthday week, so I figured James, James Bond, 
spy. You get the drift. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's just saying that to flatter me, folks. Lol. <laughs> yeah, I like to flatter people, and James, it's all worth it. I was I always wanted to talk about spy films, and, you know, it's time to talk about go undercover and talk about those films. Okay. Well, that's all. I guess that's all for the show then. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, um, but yeah, it's, until next time, thanks for listening and watching this podcast. Make sure you like this if you really like this. Comment below what is your favorite Tarzan adaptation? Uh, do you like Disney's Tarzan? What do you like about it? Have you heard about Greystoke or The Lost City? Or have you actually seen Tarzan? Uh, the Legend of Tarzan, the new one. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Subscribe for more podcasts. And uh, remember, long live cinema and adios amigos. Ciao for now. See you later, dudes.